Hello, my name is John Broadwell, and I'm an embedded systems uh, consultant and medical device development consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at the first code that's available to drive your Serial Wombat chips from uh, Raspberry Pi using Python. And this is pretty preliminary. I was working over working on it over the weekend. I would tell you I am not a strong Python person. I am not a strong Linux person. You know, most of my experience really is in the C code that goes directly onto embedded uh, eight 16-bit microcontrollers. So, you know, anybody, if you have a better idea to do what I've done, please leave me a comment down below. And as I say, this is very preliminary. Some of this stuff will probably change. So if there's a... Uh, suggested video above my head right now click on that one because it means that okay some things have changed since you saw this video and take a look at if it's minor stuff take a look at the comments and the uh, text down below in the description for this video so i would uh, like to show you basically the steps that i went through to get a out of the box raspberry pi 4 working with the serial wombat 4b chip so let's get started with that right now. So the first thing we have to do is create a Raspberry Pi image, and we're going to do that with the Raspberry Pi imager. I'm going to plug in a 32 gigabyte uh, SD card, micro SD card into my computer. And OK, we've got it. And it is blank. Uh, and it's this G drive right here. So I will open the downloader. Now I've prior installed the Raspberry Pi imager from raspberrypi.com. And there we go. I'm going to choose my OS, which I want the Raspberry Pi OS. Storage, I'm going to choose my G drive. And I'm going to say write. Yes, I want it to... Oops. Yes, I wanted to erase everything. So this will take, I don't know, some number of minutes. So let's just be patient and we'll come back soon. Okay, almost there and finalizing, done. Okay, so one of the drives won't be visible under Windows. The other one, which is the boot drive, will be. And so we will open the remove. So I'm going to remove and insert that disk, and that will make Windows re-initialize it. And so it creates a couple of drives, one of which is accessible, one of which is not. The one that we are interested in is the uh, drive that is accessible, which is called boot. And you'll see there's a variety of Raspberry Pi files on there. So we're going to want to get started in, and I'm using a headless configuration, no keyboard, no monitor. So I'm going to create a blank file called SSH on the drive. And then because I'm connecting over Wi-Fi, you could do it with a cable hooked up to your router instead if you didn't want to do this. We're going to create a file called wasupplicant.cov. I've already created one of these. It has my network configuration, my password uh, in it. You can see how to create that uh, on other tutorials. I won't go to that level of detail. But basically, when we put this card in the Raspberry Pi, it will start up, it'll connect to my Wi-Fi network, and it will automatically start an SSH session. So let's plug it in now and make it go. Okay, I gave it a few minutes to, a couple of minutes to start up. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say ping Raspberry Pi. Okay, it is up and running. It's on my network and it's at address 192.168.1.213. So now we want to connect to it through SSH. And so use your favorite client. I'm going to use PuTTY. And We will go to Raspberry Pi. It's the only Raspberry Pi I have open on my network. And so Putty's given me a warning. I'm going to ignore that. And then we are going to log in as Pi. Default password is Raspberry. And awesome. We are in. 
and now the first thing we're going to do is change the password. Current password is Raspberry. And for our new password, let's say Blueberry. Now we'll set up the Raspberry Pi to use remote desktop protocol uh, from Microsoft. And so the first thing is we just did an, an install. So let's do a sudo apt get update. And this is going to update a variety of the packages that are in Raspberry Pi. Okay, and then we'll do a sudo apt get up, uh, upgrade. Okay, now we are going to create a new user. Uh, sudo add user. John, and we will also make the password for this one blueberry. Okay, and now let's add that user to the uh, super user group, sudo. Now we will, and okay, so that's in there. And now, we should be able to open a remote desktop connection. Okay, and let's just make sure that we're part of the pseudo group. Okay, and so we were able to run a command under pseudo, so we should be good. Now, the uh, Python example I have today relies on the uh, Pi GPIO uh, library that's available, and so to get that, we're going to go to we're going to say w get https colon slash slash github dot com slash joan twenty nine thirty seven slash pi gpio slash archive slash master dot zip. So we're going to download that. Now we're going to unzip it. Go into the directory. Make it. This will take a minute. And sudo make install it. And that should, uh, that should go. Now... Next, we need the Serial Wombat code. So, and I did this earlier, so it should be in here. So, git clone https slash github.com slash Broadwell Consulting Inc. slash Serial Wombat Python module. Okay, so that worked.
So now we can CD do serial wombat python module. If we look in here, there's a variety of different files that we can use. So let's go. Yep, that's not what I wanted to do. That'll take a minute to open and close that browser. Let's open under programming the Thani Python IDE. And then we will say load. Serial Wombat Python module. Serial Wombat I squared C example dot Python. And this is going to use the PIGPIO uh, library through the Serial Wombat uh, pi gpio i squared c class and this is going to be structured a little bit different than the way the arduino stuff is because there may be a variety of different ways that you want to be able to connect to a serial wombat chip uh, based on your system and i don't want you to have to download every single library under the sun to satisfy all the dependencies or whatever and so in this case typically you will import a Python file that corresponds to the low-level interface class uh, that you're going to be using, which is uh, which inherits from the Serial Wombat chip class. And so in this case, we can say, okay, we're going to instantiate a Serial Wombat chip from this uh, Serial Wombat chip pi gpio i squared c. And in this case, the pins that we're on are in 17 and 27. And note that those are not the standard uh, Raspberry Pi I squared C pins because we're bit banging the I squared C. And we're doing that because the, the Raspberry Pi I squared C driver does not properly support clock stretching. And clock stretching is a fundamental way, part of the way that the Serial Wombat chip interacts with the host. While it's you know doing its real time thing, the host may have to wait until it can generate a reply to the last message. So that's why for the first version, uh, we're using bit banged pi GPIO. And so it looks pretty much uh, like other uh, Arduino base. And what you'll see here is that all of the interfaces, as closely as possible, the names and the parameters follow the Arduino. So the goal that I have is whether you're writing in Python or .NET uh, C Sharp or Arduino C++ or C++ for a PC or the Raspberry Pi or whatever, that those libraries ultimately all have the same interfaces. So if you see code that somebody else did or you see you know, one of my tutorials that's written for, for Arduino, you don't have to worry. You can use the uh, equivalent interfaces on Raspberry Pi under Python with a minimal amount of change. So this example is quite simple. Uh, basically, we are going to uh, instantiate a serial Wombat chip. Uh, we're going to do a begin on that false, say don't do a reset. Uh, then we will read the version, the model, the firmware version. We will instantiate a servo and attach that to pin number three on the serial Wombat chip. Uh, we will uh, instantiate an analog input and we'll attach that to pin number two and we will instantiate a quadrature rotary encoder reader uh, that we will attach to pin zero and one with a 10 millisecond uh, debounce time then we'll read the analog the analog is connected up to a potentiometer that we can turn which should be interesting and we'll read our source voltage then we'll go into a loop where we read the knob uh, and just display the results and we will also uh, read the analog and we'll feed the analog input from the potentiometer back to the servo so that as we turn the uh, potentiometer back and forth, the servo will move accordingly. So one thing that's important to know is that in order to use Pi GPIO, it has to be running uh, in the background. So we're going to do a pseudo uh, Pi GPIO daemon, and now that's running. So now we hit run, and it ran. Okay, it found our serial Wombat 4 chip, uh, 4B, and now you can see it is uh, moving and reading the uh, rotary encoder, which hasn't moved, and the pot, which is set to 42,000, and the servo is uh, 
in place. So now we will uh, move those knobs a little bit and see what happens. So we can see here, uh, basically we've got a very simple setup. We've got our I squared C pins going from 17 to 27 to the SDA and SCL pins on the serial Wombat chip. Got our uh, bypass capacitor here, a couple of pull-up resistors, uh, the rotary encoder, which is attached to pin zero and one, the potentiometer, which is pinch attached to pin two, and the servo, which is attached to pin number three. And we're driving the servo off of a USB battery. I wouldn't recommend driving servos directly from the Raspberry Pi power supply. So if we turn the rotary encoder back and forth, we can see that the counts are moving appropriately on the uh, terminal. And if we go below zero, then we roll over to 65,000. And similarly, if we adjust the potentiometer, we get a voltage range, which is then fed back to the servo and the servo moves appropriately. So that's about all there is for the first demo. Uh, you guys are welcome to download it and give it a try. One thing to note is that uh, if you put your Python script in a loop like this, in order to get out, you hit stop. Uh, at that point, the Pi GPIO will not exit cleanly. If you hit run again, you'll get this error, uh, Pi GPIO, GPIO already in use. In order to solve that, send the command sudo kill all Pi GPIOD. And then if you want to start it back up again, sudo pi gpiod. So that will kill the, the service and then start it back up. And you hit run and it will work again. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope you're excited about uh, the Python and uh, Raspberry Pi support finally being available. Uh, again, I'm not an expert in either of these areas. So if you see something I i've missed uh let me know and at this point the library is very uh preliminary it does not have all the features that the arduino library does and does not have a unit test script so you know if you're using it at the uh as of you know march of 2022 uh, it's kind of bleeding edge don't be afraid to get onto the GitHub repository and leave bugs if you found bugs in the code leave issues uh if you have uh, just general support requests, uh, then I would recommend uh, either leaving a comment on this video, that's how I respond the fastest, or send me an email at help at serialwombat.com. Usually there's a few days delay on that one. Again, uh, you know, I, I prioritize the YouTube comment help requests because everybody can see them and it's generally helpful to the community. Uh, I'm probably not the right person to ask with your deep level Raspberry Pi or Python questions, uh, I would hit the internet on those and see if you can find some answers from people who are a little more experienced than I am in those areas. But uh, if you have a Serial Wombat specific question, then I will definitely do the best I can to answer it. So that's all I have today. Uh, I hope you guys are excited about the forthcoming Serial Wombat 18AB chip and look for a Kickstarter that will be coming in April on those. I certainly would support, would appreciate your guys' backing. And then sometime later this year, after the Kickstarter rewards are fulfilled, then we will be selling that new exciting 18-pin uh, chip on Amazon. So looking forward to that very much. Uh, until we talk again, keep making stuff and keep having fun. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. 
Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.